Or is it just almost as you react? And this is English counties explained by the channel J Foreman. Didn't they do this already? Or they did the London boroughs. I reacted to that, I think. Yeah, one thing I realized about England and United Kingdom in general, Great Britain, right? That there is way too much confusion. It started with uh, CGP Grey channel that I started to react to from there, right? I mean, what is uh, United Kingdom? Is that a country? No, it's a union, United Kingdom. So are the, you know, uh, England, Scotland, those are the countries, they're yeah, kind of. Uh, is London a proper city? Oh no, there is also another city, right, inside the London. And there is a such thing as Greater London, there are boroughs. Way too much confusion, right? So I guess, yeah, this will, I hope this will clear things up. This is by the channel J Foreman, which is an awesome channel with British content, right? So let's watch it. We're tip men, and it's tip map. Map men, map men, map, map, map men, men. In today's programme, we're going to talk about counties. Counties are the building blocks that make up Britain. The units you're expected to have heard of to help place towns and villages you've not heard of, such as Wingerworth. Where? In Derbyshire. Oh, where's Derbyshire? Arguably, the county that inspires the fiercest pride and loyalty in its inhabitants is Yorkshire. Yorkshire is known for Yorkshire puddings, Yorkshire terriers, and Yorkshire tea, which comes from this part and of Jeremy Yorkshire. Clarkson. With its distinctive accent, strong identity, and intense one-way rivalry with Lancashire next door, Yorkshire folk are proud to tell everyone they come across that they come from Yorkshire. And they're all wrong to do so, because Yorkshire doesn't exist. Yes, it does. All what? Right, show me a map with Yorkshire on it. OK. Here. This map of the 39 counties of England clearly shows a county called Yorkshire. But this map of the 48 counties of England shows separate north, south, west and east riding off Yorkshire, but no single county called Yorkshire. <laughs> That's a rage, isn't it? Yeah, if you cut off the Yorkshire in the north, south, west, it's still Yorkshire. But my map is correct and up to date. So is mine. And so is this one. What's going on? We're doing map men. No, I mean with the counties. <laughs> well, the definition of Wait a minute, those are all the current maps? I thought one, one is the old one, one is the new one. What? History of local government in England. O okay, so even the maps are different. County in Britain is a minefield of anomalies, asterisks, confusions, vague areas and contradictory Wikipedia articles. The more you look for answers about what a county really is, the more questions you come across. Which is perhaps why no one's attempted to do a video about them before. Even Google Docs won't let you type the word county without suggesting, did you mean country? But we're not taking citation needed for an answer. It's time to do some actual research to find- Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm, you know, I always wondered this. How does geography class work in Britain? Because holy shit, this is confusing. I've never come across anything that's more confusing than this, right? Counties, there are even maps that are different. Some, some has Yorkshire, some has different part of Yorkshire, right? Oh God, this is way too complicated. And out once and for all, what is a county? And go! Right, now that we've eaten all those biscuits, should we start doing some research? I've done it all. <laughs> the first time England was split into what we now call counties was back in the 10th century when King Ethelstan wanted to make sure all the same laws were being obeyed and all the same taxes were being collected all across England. Which, curiously, is the opposite reason why you divide a nation up nowadays. He split his kingdom into bite-sized, manageable chunks and sent an earl to be in charge of each one of them. How they got their names tells you a bit about how they were formed. These were named after ethnic groups or old kingdoms that existed before England. These ones that end in sex <laughs> were part of the Saxon, Saxon kingdoms which spread yeah. across the south of England. And these ones took their name from the most important town, the county town, and added the Anglo-Saxon word sheer on the end. The same word that sheriff comes from. Sheer, sheriff, sheriff, ooh. Yeah, there's also, you know, uh, lots of Viking type names too, right? Be when the Vikings came in, yeah. Ooh. And for our American viewers, it's pronounced sheer, not shire. Actually, it's pronounced sheer, not sheer, plebs. Over the centuries, these areas have been controlled by earls, Yorkshire, dukes, yeah. sheriffs, lords, and at one point, counts, which is how they came to be known as counties. The precise location of exactly where one county stopped and another one started wasn't... Oh, okay. Counties. Count. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Damn, that's so simple, but I never thought of that. ...important in those days. Nobody tried to draw the boundaries... I was the county just comes from country, I guess, right? Some the change of the meaning of the... You know, you just change somewhat of the word and change the meaning, but no. From count, counties. That makes Lapped sense. ...until the 1080s when the Normans did a survey. Hello, Norman. I've done a survey of all the people who say they live in Worcestershire. Thanks, Norman. I'll just add that to my survey of all the people who say they live in Gloucestershire. Oh dear. Oh dear. And that's how the fuzzy county borders became sharp lines, but with lots of panhandles, detached areas, exclaves and squiddly bits. 
England's counties varied massively in size. The biggest, Yorkshire, was half the size of Wales, and the smallest, Rutland, was roughly the size of a Wales with zero cities and frankly had no business being a county. Harsh. But these differences didn't really matter until... In 1888, the Prime Minister Lord Salisbury established administrative counties, making democracy local. Each county would now have its own county council in the county town, in charge of local things like police, fire, council tax and so on. But some counties were too big to be easily manageable. Sussex got split into east and west. And Yorkshire was split into its historic ridings, a word that meant thirds. Thirdings, thirdings, ridings, ridings, yeah, that sort of works. In addition to this, big cities were given the status of county borough, which made them independent from the county they were in, effectively taking the Leicester out of Leicestershire, Derby out of Derbyshire, and Nottingham out of Nottinghamshire. So does this all mean that a united Yorkshire hasn't existed since 1888? Well, not exactly. Strap in. The new administrative counties did not replace the historic counties. Both systems confusingly, confusingly coexisted, coexisted at the same, same time. time. And the confusion was only going to get worse. Lots of towns in Britain had the same name. This often caused confusion, with many people's letters being delivered to the wrong place. Whoa, whoa, what? Britain had the Saint, same name. Saint this Ives. Often caused whoa, there are many Newcastle and then Newport. Look at the, how many Newports are there. Caused confusion, with many people's letters being delivered to the wrong place. Which is why, from 18 something onwards, the Royal Mail required that every address had to end with a county. But! Because many post towns happened to spread inconveniently across county borders, the Royal Mail, for their own convenience, introduced the last thing Britain needed another county's map. The post office's counties didn't match up with the historic ones or the administrative ones. For example, the town of Ugly was in the county of Essex, but the address ended in Hertfordshire. Which meant there were now three interpretations of what county you lived in. Historical, administrative and or postal. As the centuries rolled on... Why? Why not just cooperate and agree with one map? Damn. <laughs> this is weird, man. Holy shit. I mean... You know, if some foreigner goes there to live there, I guess, th th it would take ages for him to figure everything out. The county system went from being confusing to being completely out of date. After the Industrial Revolution, Britain's new big cities were manspreading themselves across county borders. And many county towns were no longer the commercial powerhouses they used to be. The once mighty city of York had fallen to fifth place in non-existent Yorkshire. The counties didn't reflect 20th century Britain in any cultural, practical or meaningful sense. It was time for a complete shake-up. The year was 1972, a time of optimism and experimentation and the first episode of Rainbow. The Local Government Act of 1972 was a radical attempt at cleaning up the complicated, outdated counties mess both once and for all. Brand new metropolitan counties sprang into existence, with modern sounding names like Merseyside, Greater Manchester, West Midlands and Tyne and Weir. London, of course, wasn't included in any of this, as they'd already done their own thing ten years earlier, which Jay has yeah. previously discussed on a video he made without me. At the same time, several traditional counties vanished overnight. It was county carnage. Huntingdonshire got eaten by Cambridgeshire, Hereford got anded with Worcester, Cumberland, Westmoreland and this lump of Lancashire were all merged and given the horrible new name Cumbria. Yeah, we saw that video from Jay Foreman, right? I mean, uh, you know, people had to give up their uh, you know, names and, I guess, adopt a new name, which usually is from the neighbor's name, which they probably hated, so that created a real issue. Yeah. And silly little Rutland was sensibly absorbed by Leicestershire. Chances are nobody would have Battenbergd an eyelid at yet another change to Britain's local authorities, but the government made a big mistake. They messed with Yorkshire. Yorkshire's borders got a complete meddling, creating a new South Yorkshire, which was cheeky. But when the East Riding got taken out of Yorkshire altogether and became part of the new Humberside, that was not on. It was off. The previously Yorkshirean residents of Hull were not at all keen to be lumped with Grimsby on the other side of the River Humber. It was a particularly yeah. bizarre union given the Humber Bridge connecting the two sides hadn't even been built yet. There was an anti-Humberside campaign and even anti-Humberside graffiti. All this kerfuffle forced the government's hand, and in 1996... This is whole surreal uh, thing, but it, I guess it's, uh, you know, it's common with all the countries, right? Not just uh, England. That obviously even the cities and states basically hate their neighbor at some level, right? So whenever we try to reform it at this level and try to merge two states, of course they're going to hate it. I'm not taking the name of that state, I'm much better. But that's fucked up, right? Two countries fighting each other, neighboring country. Oh, that's nothing. Even inside the country, states, counties fight each other. Six, Humberside quietly disappeared. As did other unpopular experiments like Cleveland and Avon. Hereford and Worcester once again became Hereford and Worcester. Sure, even ridiculous Rutland regained its status as England's smallest county. 
The shake-up of 1972 designed to simplify things did nothing of the sort, instead marking the beginning of an era where county borders, names and powers have been changing on an ever-increasing basis. England today has nine regions comprising 47 ceremonial counties alongside six metropolitan counties comprising 36 metropolitan districts, 26 non-metropolitan counties comprising 192 non-metropolitan districts and 56 unitary authorities, not including Greater London which is a ceremonial county and not a county, comprising 32 boroughs and the City of London which is a district and a county and not a ceremonial county and we haven't even talked about Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland where it's different. Front. Absolute state of this. Although it may seem more impossible than ever to tell what and isn't a county, according to this particularly aggressive map publisher, It's very simple. Our historic counties have never been affected, nor their boundaries changed by the endless shifting of local government boundaries over the past hundred years. This is a view shared by the increasingly exasperated Association of British Counties, who seek to Give every county a county day, teach counties to school children, fly county flags in every county, stop using the word county for local authorities who are not proper counties. Fruitcakes. The reality is, unless you live in a county that's particularly unusually proud of itself, like Yorkshire, in general not much of a monkey's is given about the county you live in. And that might be because it just doesn't really matter. It's not like the USA, where laws vary from one state to the next. Even Royal Mail doesn't care anymore. Thanks to postcodes, putting a county on your... That makes sense. I mean, you know, laws and most of the practical things are going to be the same. So I guess in the end it's, it's all come down to historical, you know, significance and heritage. Otherwise you would just create certain states, right? These are the state. I mean, counties are kind of like a state, right? I mean, they have, you know, metropolitan cities and things like that inside. You know, so maybe they could have just make few states. I mean, England is not that big compared to the other countries. So you could create few states and cities in them and that would be easy. But you can't do that because historical significance, right? England has a thousand plus year, I guess, heritage. You can't just remove uh, certain counties and create one big giant state. People will be pissed off. Like, what about the heritage? And also, you know, those counties probably has different, uh, you know, culture and architecture of the buildings and things. I mean, you can tell the difference between two different counties. So if you merge them in, I mean, it feels kind of weird. So I don't know. Because of the, all the history and heritage, it's really complicated in that sense. But yeah, it is not like USA, right? The every state has a different law. Which surprised me a lot, right? I, I learned that recently that, that it's a it's a really big difference. Like if you're traveling through USA state by state, you have to know the law. Even the traffic laws are different sometimes. Your address has been unnecessary since 1996, despite the boxes they make you fill in on Amazon. But just because they're not important doesn't mean we should forget about them. Present day knowledge and understanding of English counties is in an abysmal state. We stopped over four people on the street and not a single one of them could faultlessly name every single county in England and its county town. Well, we think that's a terrible shame and it's about time something was done about it. Oh, there's Leicestershire, Oxfordshire, Rutland and... That's appropriate response. Knock, knock. Who's there? Sir. Sir who? Surfshark is a VPN, an app... Ah. Yeah, we will go to Surfshark dot deals for us says mapman and support this channel j4 man is a great damn channel i've never come across some you know proper british humor channel like this right sometimes they even you know remind me of the original top gear with their humors so it's just awesome yeah i mean you know it's uh it makes sense in the end right england counties it is complicated but because of all the history and heritage it has to be you can't just get rid of things and merge right uh, lots of counties into one state type of thing yeah, not that only if you you know travel through the state every things will look different but also people would kind of you know go against that like you know this is about heritage you can't just you know you can't just remove our name right uh, the this county has been stood here for thousands of years or something like that so yeah it makes sense and also it doesn't matter in the practical terms I mean, it can be confusing, but you might get hang, you might get the hang of it, right? In the end, laws are the same, so yeah. Right, well, that was English counties explained by the channel J Foreman. Still confused, right? I mean, still cannot pinpoint it. If somebody just, you know, came in front of me and just said, "Explain this," I can't explain it. Still, even after listening to all this, counties are like states, but a bit different, I guess. Yeah. Right, well, if you like my Alexander phone, like subscribe. Check out the Alexander. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards. So basically, the cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.